Hey everybody, welcome back. So in this video I would like to assemble my cheapo little DSO-138 oscilloscope kit that I got and um, this is the the um, box I printed for it, the little case where I showed you the the surface mode that lets you outline the font. I got a real neat one of those little neat 9 volt rechargeable batteries It just takes a a um, charge cable with a micro USB port on one end, a little clicky switch, and I got a little 9 volt battery cap with a, um, forget what they're called off the top of my head that I put on one end, and of course I'm going to have to cut the negative probably to connect it to the switch, but before I can do any of this, I got a problem. And that is some maroon in China glued the screen on so crooked I can't get it to fit to the case. So before I can go much of any further with this, I am going to have to um, get that screen off of the glue. And thanks to you for the thanks to the subscriber who told me they're just glued on. I kind of kind of figured they were, but okay, um, so I've got a number of little tools to help me do this. I have a little suction cup, and these are all tools I got, you know, when you have to replace a screen or a battery and a phone or a tablet. So a little suction cup to help me pull the um, to lift up on the screen. I got a couple little pry tools, a little heavy duty thing that's supposed to probably look like a guitar pick, something that probably is a guitar pick, and a little pry tool that came with one of those kits and I've got my um, my little heat gun from my soldering iron um, station and hot air station that I showed you guys a while back so I've got this set as low as it'll go which is a hundred degrees Celsius which is probably twice as hot as it ought to be but held back about four inches away it's about like a um, hot summer breeze here in Arizona Okay, so one thing I did notice is you may not have to pull this board completely, the, the LCD panel completely off. If you pull the whole LCD board off and you heat both sides of it till it's nice and toasty warm, not so hot you can't touch it, but just so it feels nice and warm on both sides, give it time to heat through, you may be able to put some twisting motion on the screen itself and the glue is then soft enough to... um to twist and then if you just hold it in that position till it cools off and you might have to do it two or three times so let's put the board back on and let's see now let's make sure it works after my abuse and I really don't think I abused it all that bad but let's make sure it works let's try it in the case again and um, let's see what we get okay lights up booting and um, it says attention. I noticed some of them say under attention. It says about not buying clones, but and they remove that on this one because I'm guessing it is a clone. But since it's open source, I'm not really sure what is a clone and what isn't. And I'm also not sure I really need to care. So anyway, let's put it in and um, let's kind of hope it fits straight. It still fits in the case okay, I think. It still fits in the case okay. And um, yeah, that's nice and straight, fits in really good. Let's make sure our battery fits in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the battery with the charging port down at this end, I think. And I think I'm going to put it, how am I going to put this? I'm going to put that up. doesn't really matter how I put it. I'm going to have to cut a little bit of a hole to let that, to let the charging cable go in. And um I'm going to have to put the clicky switch in, and I believe that I will have enough room for the clicky switch. I may have to trim those terminals back slightly, but that's okay. And there's already a hole for the clicky switch. It's not quite big enough, but, you know, it's plastic. Big deal, right? And um, then the case is going to fit on the back, and I'll do all those things, and I will be back, and we will see what we see. 
Okay, I drilled my hole for the clicky switch here. There it is there, and there was already a hole there. I just made it bigger. I just used a twist drill and held it in my hand and did it. This Polyterra PLA is flexible enough that it actually drilled pretty nicely. Didn't really have a problem with it cracking or catching, worked really well. And I used a hot knife and um, a little bit of flame and a um, utility knife blade to cut myself a hole for the charge cable for the battery. So now I'll be able to slide a charge cable in because I'm just going to use some sticky tape or hot glue and just glue this battery in. And that way I hope to never op have to open the case. Or, I mean, for the life of this battery anyway, how many charge cycles it has, which for me may be forever using this. So, let's check it. Let's make sure our clicky switch fits in. There's our clicky switch. Let's make sure the battery fits. And it's going to go like that. Right there. So I have more than enough space. More than enough space there. I don't even have to trim those contacts on the clicky switch down. So all I have to do is cut my cable, run the negative cable through the clicky switch, and get the thing mounted in, so let's do that. Okay, so I have my clicky switch in place, and if you can see it, I have that soldered in place onto the battery connector and through the through the negative wire. I have also put some of that blue shirt tape, sticky tape, on the bottom of the battery. Um, the worst comes to worst, I can always um, hot glue it in, but I think that's going to work. Let's get the little blue little stuff on the side that let's exposes the other. I like this sure tape sticky tape because of how thin it is. If you got a lot of gap to fill up, then that kind of it kind of doesn't work well for that. And sometimes it's little blue covering can be a real pain in the tush to get off. There it comes. I'm not very good at sticky tape. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and stick that down in. I want it right up against the back of there. And how's that look? The little wire's got to be in the right place. Okay. All right. That's in there pretty solid. Let's hook it up and put it in. I still haven't printed the buttons and little slide switches, but that's okay. Do that at any time. And let's click it off. Let's let it boot up and then we'll click it off. All right, and let's stick it in. Got a little bit more wire than I needed, but that's okay. I'm sure I can find some place to tuck it out of the way. Got to come down through here and through there, and then it's going to go in there like that. Come on, why well, you no go? There we go, there we go, and and the screen's crooked again. Up, oh, I've got the wire hooked under it. That's not good. Wire can't go there. There is more than enough space. You can see it, there is more than enough space in there for the extra wiring. You just got to get it to go in when you put it together. And of course it wants to fight. They all want to fight. You ever notice that? And I'm not going to bother making a hole for the, the power external power connector because it's going to be powered off the battery. Alright, I am going to pause momentarily while I manage to get this together with all the wires. Hang on. Okay, so I did manage to get it put in place. It actually looks pretty good. Charging port there. Clicky switch here. And um, I'm going to get the buttons printed and get the back on solid. Um, right now it doesn't seem to want to close, but I don't really want to push it too hard because I do have to open it back up to put the buttons in. Once I get the buttons in and I get it closed, um, I might wind up putting some dabs of hot glue in it just to make sure the back doesn't come off. Anyway, let's get the buttons and the levers printed. 
Okay, I've got all the parts printed, the buttons and the switches and everything, and just a couple things to touch on. Um, I actually printed a couple of different sets before I got the size exactly how I wanted it. One thing to touch on, when I first tried test fitting the, um, you can see it here, when I first tried test fitting the switches and buttons, it knocked the red outline off from around some of the buttons and switches. So that might be something you want to take off before you print the second half of the print, or even before you, after everything, before you attempt to um, put the buttons and switches in. So I did wind up sizing everything down by about 3%, and then I, um, because the buttons were too big, buttons were too big, but the hole in the bottom for the switches were too small. So I sized everything down, and then I drilled the, I drilled the hole that's going to go in these sliders to the point where it fits and test fitted everything. Uh, another thing, printing standing up like this, layer lines are going to be going back and forth from left to right, and one of my one of my slider switches, the little top broke off. The rest of them seem solid, so I'm not going to concern myself about it. You might want to think about printing them sideways, sitting on their side like this, but then again, it's going to be support, on, there's going to be a little support under that top piece, which kind of sucks. But anyway, let's pop them in and let's see if we can get it all together and see how it fits. Okay, that is quite tricky getting that board in and getting all the buttons lined up and the wires not in the way and all the switches and everything on their little pins. But I think I got it, so let's check it. I'm just kind of holding it together at the moment. In fact, you know what let's do? Let's hold it together using the back like it's supposed to go on like that. And since I don't ever plan on taking this apart, or at least not very much, I am going to, I got my hot glue warming up, I am going to put some hot glue on it to hold it together because I can charge it through that hole where the charge port is, and I'll show you that here in a minute. Let's just make sure all the buttons work. So we're going to go from ground, can you see that? We're going to go from ground down here to AC and then DC. So AC and DC and back to AC and back to ground. And now we're going to go from 0.1 1 volt to 0.1 volt to 10 millivolt. So, so we're on 1 volt now. That puts us at, or we're on, we're on, we got to go over to one here, so now I know that one works too. So down here in the lower left hand corner, one volt to 0.1 volt, and then to 10 millivolts. Okay, so that switch all works. So, and then this one is going to go from X1 to X2 and then to X5. So 0.1 volt, whoops, a little sticky, 0.1 volt. I'll keep passing the middle one. There we go, 0.2 and then 0.5. Okay. So they all work. So, okay here should put us on hold. And it does. And I can hear these buttons. And let's go to select down to, to our milliseconds. Plus should move up. Hope you can see this. Plus should move us up. Got the light and everything. Minus should move us down. And select moves us from thing to thing. And OK does hold on and off. And the reset button, let me find something to poke it with. Reset button should reset it. And it does. OK. So I'm going to make sure the hot glue gun, you know what? Let's make sure the charge cable goes in. And where's the charge cable? I don't have a charge cable sitting here for it, do I? OK, I'm going to grab a charge cable. I'm going to make sure the hot glue is heated up, and I'll be right back. Okay, I got a charge cable. Let's plug it in. I'm still just holding it together. It pops together, but um, in my little world, you know I'm going to drop it pretty quick. So I'm going to plug the charge cable in. And can you see the green light showing, up oh, red light showing it's charging? So that works. I got more than enough room to plug my charge cable in. 
um, power switch on and off. So let's go ahead and um, I'm just going to hold it right like that and I'm going to take my hot glue gun and I am just going to put some hot glue in the corners. All right, and that's all I'm going to do. So I'm going to let this completely cool off. Squeeze it a little bit, let it completely cool off. And I'm going to get the leads and we'll hook it to something and we'll see how it works. So now that it's all put together and glued and seems to be functioning correctly, let's just set up a little experiment to verify that it's working and kind of figure out what an oscilloscope can do for us so that just a multimeter can't. And I'm no expert on oscilloscopes, trust me, but um, I've got a couple of ideas of what I could possibly use one for, and um, that's kind of why I picked this up. Plus, I just think it'll be fun to play with. So, I have an Arduino Uno set up here. It set the power of this blue LED at 50% power. Normally puts out 3.3 volts or 3.25 something or other in there. So let's plug it in and there it is at half power. I hope it doesn't seem too bright on the camera. Let's take our multimeter. This is a little O1 OW16B that has Bluetooth in it that I reviewed a while back that I've really found lots of uses for. I love the Bluetooth. It's nice to be able to hook the multimeter up in one place and then go sit down someplace else and look at it on your phone. Anyway, let's take a look at it and let's see what the multimeter says is going into that LED. So the multimeter says I'm getting a pretty steady 1.605 volts. But I think we know the Arduino really isn't putting 1.605 volts into that because it doesn't. What it's really doing is it's turning the full power, the full 3.3 volts, on and off and on and off and on and off very, very quickly in order to get this half power setting. So we're really not seeing the true story from the multimeter. It's averaging it, or it, since it's a true RMS multimeter, it is using some real fancy math to get a, a more accurate reading than just an average. But 1.6 isn't, isn't what's happening. So I've got the DSO-138 oscilloscope hooked up. Let's power it up, and let's see what it's showing. And just to let you know, I have the multiplier set on X1. I have the voltage set on 1 volt, and I'm set to DC up here. I'm also set to half of a millisecond. Each one of those little divisions, you can see that there's kind of like graphing lines up and down and side to side on the screen. Those little lines, this way is time, and this way is voltage. So each little, each little division this way is 0.5 milliseconds, which is 0 0.0005, I think, of a second, or 5 ten thousandths of a second. And the lines this way are each going to be 1 volt. And if you count the lines, we have 1, 2, 3, and a little bit over. So we're getting actually like 3.2, maybe 3.3 right in there volts into, into this LED. But it's switching it on and off very, very quickly, and that's what our square wave is showing. Now, if I hold down the select button on this, it will bring up some text information. The, um, the duty cycle is popping between 49 and 50 percent, and you'll see the volt max is 3.3 volts, and the volt min is zero. So it's turning it on and off every half a millisecond. Let's switch that information back off. Oops, didn't get it. There we go. So that's what an oscilloscope, even a really inexpensive one like this, can do for you. It can tell you the true story of what's happening in a circuit or a multimeter. The multimeter is more accurate. You want, a, you want an accurate measure of voltage or or resistance, you want a multimeter. But if you want to see what's really going on, the oscilloscope, even a little cheapy like this one, can give you a much closer idea of what's actually happening. I have a couple of ideas for motor tuning that I think this will, you know, it might not be accurate enough, but you know what, I think it'll be fun to play with and it might tell me if it will really allow me to do what I'd like to do. 
Anyway, that's a video for another time. That's it for today. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you um, learned something. I know that I did. Please like and subscribe and hit notifications. And I'll catch you the next time. Bye for now.